everyone. Welcome to BBS. I'm really excited that you're here with me um, learning about the Bible this summer. As you can see from my awesome shirt and our awesome chalkboard, our theme for this summer is Be Strong and Courageous. And our theme verse comes from the book of Joshua, which is in the Old Testament. And Joshua 1.9 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When I was looking through the Bible, I realized there are a zillion amazing stories that we could talk about. So it was really hard to narrow it down, but I did manage to narrow it down to five that we're gonna talk about all week long. And as we learn about each of these amazing stories, we're gonna think about two concepts, two things that I want us to remember each evening. First, we can be strong and courageous because we know that God is always with us. And number two, that God makes a way where there seems to be no way. He does impossible things. So I'm really looking forward to having a wonderful week of VBS. So we're going to dive right in to our lesson today, which is about crossing the Red Sea. So today's amazing story also comes from the Old Testament. The Old Testament is sort of the first part of your Bible, and then the New Testament is near the end of your Bible. So near the very beginning of your Bible is the book of Exodus. And we're learning about a group of people called the Israelites. These are God's people, God's chosen people. But they had been enslaved. And I looked up that word in the dictionary so I could be sure I understood what that meant. And that word means forced to work without pay and not treated very well. So the Israelite people were in a very bad situation and they were in the country of Egypt. And through some very unusual circumstances, another one of God's amazing stories, the Israelites were allowed to go free. Before that happened, God sent 10 plagues on Egypt to convince the Pharaoh, who is like the king of Egypt, to let the Israelites go because God was not pleased that the Israelites were enslaved. He sent all kinds of crazy, crazy plagues, uh, frogs, flies, hail, even darkness, trying to convince Pharaoh, you need to let my people go. And eventually he did. And they were very excited that they were gonna get to be free and to live their lives the way they wanted to. But the Israelites, they had been enslaved for 400 years years. That's way longer than you and I have even been alive. So this was a really, really, really big deal. So when that happened, something else happened thereafter. Our amazing story comes after this, even though it was quite amazing that Pharaoh finally agreed to let the Israelites go. So Moses was who God had chosen to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and into a better place. So he led them out of Egypt and into the wilderness, which is like a deserty kind of place. And they were completely dependent on God to show them where to go, to provide food and water and all of these things. And eventually, this caravan of millions of people came to the Red Sea. Now, picture the Atlantic Ocean or a very big body of water. This was something they could not cross or even swim across. So they set up camp there and decided to stay a while. Meanwhile, back in Egypt, Pharaoh, who was very evil in heart, he decided that he changed his mind. He was not happy that he had let the Israelite people go. All of these people who had been working free of charge, without pay, and had been doing a great job building all of these things for him were now gone. And so he decided that he and all of his chariots and horses and all of the people that worked under him were going to go chase after the Israelites and make them come back. 
Uh oh. So the Israelites could actually see them coming from the distance. They could see this massive army of people coming after them. And they were afraid. And they didn't react so well. They actually yelled at Moses, who was their leader, and said, what have you done? You only brought us out to the wilderness to die. We were better off in Egypt. They had forgotten that God had already done one amazing thing, which was free them from Pharaoh. They weren't very trusting of God, and they had forgotten of what he had already done. In Exodus 14, it says, Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. Then God gave instructions to Moses. He told him to raise his staff above his head and stretch his hands out over the waters, and that when he did, the waters would part and people could walk across on dry land. This is crazy. Picture walking across the Atlantic Ocean all the way to England. That would be crazy. This was impossible. Only God could do it. And it happened. All the Israelites began to cross over on dry land. Now there weren't just five or 10 Israelites. This wasn't a quick dash with just a few people. There were millions of people at all different ages, babies, toddlers, people your age, people my age, elderly people. There were all kinds of things to think about, and they all had to cross at a decent speed. God kept those waters separated as long as Moses raised his hands. But all the while, the Egyptians are still coming after them. So this was a scary moment and they really had to trust God. Pharaoh's army continued to pursue God's people, but here's the cool part, even cooler part. As soon as the Israelites had crossed over and were on the other side of the Red Sea, Moses lowered his hands, the waters filled back in, and all of Pharaoh and Pharaoh's men were enclosed by the water. God did not allow them to cross because it was not his will for them to cross. He was rescuing and saving those Israelites. Exodus 14, 31 says, Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. God showed the people that they could trust him. How could you not after an amazing experience like that? He is a good God and he loves his people. And he was showing them that he will never leave them or forsake them. He did not bring them out into the wilderness for them to die there. His will was for good for them. And that's why he used Moses to raise his hands and then God parted the waters so that the Israelites could cross over safely. He wanted to take care of them. He wanted them to be out of slavery so he could give them a better life. This shows us that we can be strong and courageous knowing that God is always leading and guiding us. And he wants good for our lives. Remember, he makes a way where there seems to be no way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us so many amazing stories in your Bible to show us how awesome you are and that we can be strong and courageous knowing that you are on our side and that you always make a way where there seems to be no way. I pray that you would help us to remember this story and apply it to our lives. We ask these things in Jesus' name I pray, amen. I hope to see you again tomorrow night. Bye-bye.